So during the first week, um, my C-section did open a little bit, like around. The hey guys, so I'm going to do my two month with this little man who is really fussy right now. Um, I thought I could put him down, so I put him down because I was going to do this outside. And then he woke up as soon as I was ready. But now he's tired and fussy, huh? So if you see me looking down, that's because I have my, <coughs> my phone and he likes to be healed. So if you see me rocking, I am two months postpartum. Um, my first month, I didn't do my first month postpartum video because I was still in so much pain. So let me start off with my first month. My first month was difficult. I had trouble getting up because if you guys didn't know, I had an emergency C-section. This is my second one, my second C-section I had. And so my first month, the first, when coming home, I didn't have a, a bowel movement for about 10 days after recovery. So. Uh, it was the worst. I couldn't go. Uh, <laughs> my stomach hurt so bad. I felt sick and nauseous. And uh, I was cramping more because of my stomach pain. And so they had me take some... Um, well, I was taking laxatives. Like the little orange pills that they give you at the hospital. I had some left from Amelia. So I was taking that. But that wasn't working. And so they had me take some mus some uh, what laxative drink. Oh, it is. It was the worst. I had to drink the whole thing. It, was, it tastes so, so nasty, so nasty, and I had to finish that. But by the next day, I did have a movement. I felt so much better. I guess they said if I didn't have a movement by the next day, I would have to go to the hospital because it would be impacted. And that could be because of the C-section and my intestines not doing, going back into what it's supposed to do, function, because when you have a C-section, um, your, your body slows down metabolism and your intestines slows down, so it wasn't functioning as it was supposed to. So uh, that just helped it kicked into gear. It was, for the first week, it was painful standing. As you can imagine, I had abdominal surgery, so it, was, it hurt standing, it hurt moving, it hurt laughing, it hurt coughing. Um, the whole area was sensitive. It just, and then I had a cough on top of that. I had a cough. Um, they said it's a post-surgery cough. Like, for some reason, it's correlated that when you have a C-section or any abdominal surgery, that you develop a cough after, which sounds, you know, like, not helpful because then it hurts because you're coughing so it was really bad and then it was also painful to do number one when it was painful to pee and that hurt and it took a while for my body to know that I had to pee you know you get that feeling like okay I gotta go to the restroom I didn't have that feeling I had the okay I think I should go I'm gonna try because it's been a while but that feeling of peeing it wasn't there and then when I did it hurt <coughs> it hurt it hurt to it hurt to pee. It could have been because of the catheter that they had put in and they took out and it was still recovering from that, but overall it wasn't it wasn't pleasant. It, it hurt a lot. I have this hat on because my like I told you guys, my hair is a mess. And so this makes me feel a little better about doing a video when I have a hat on on inside inside the house. And so and that's why I have the hat on. I was having heavy bleeding. I told you guys that the house was a mess, so I would try to clean and when I when I did too much it might bleeding would be heavier so I decided that you know I need to calm down sit down for a little bit and then um, eventually I just stopped because I was like okay I need to recover versus cleaning but the cleaning the dirtiness was stressing me out <laughs> so um, but then I, I just I slowed down and stopped so I can you know uh, relax and recover and it wasn't like I was doing anything too strenuous it was like getting up to do the dishes or uh, yeah just doing the dishes or picking up a little bit of stuff bending over or trying to vacuum that was doing too much for my recovery process so um i had to slow it down you know so if you having that slow it down please because your recovery is important and you don't want to be like hurting yourself more uh, you don't want to hurt yourself more because not clean so i did start using the belly band that they gave me at the hospital that helped um tighten everything up I, I still use it every once in a while as in two months postpartum but uh, I didn't use it religiously in my first month maybe like uh, two weeks worth of using the belly band and it did help um, it helped feel like everything was tight together and in its place but it did not help the soreness or anything like that because with my c-section everything like above the c-section was sensitive and tender so the belly band would rub against that sometimes and it would hurt um, and just because it's sensitive, it's kind of it's kind of like when you're sick and you take a shower and your skin is sensitive and it feels like little pain, like pins and needles when you're sick and it's on your skin. That's how it felt like with the belly band, 
on it. So um, that's why I didn't wear it as much. Probably would be better if I wore it more, but I, I just did it. They gave me a free one at the hospital. It's like a really simple white belly band that they gave me at the hospital. So if you want something higher tech, if your hospital doesn't give you one, maybe you can ask and see if they have one. But if not, I'm sure you can find one on Amazon uh, just to help everything go into place and keep you from jiggly. <laughs> I mean, jiggle jiggle. So during the first week, um, my C-section did open a little bit, like around the surface area. Um, it has some pus coming out of it. And so I had to go to the doctor and to see if the, the opening was all the way through or just surface level. And when she checked, oh, I tell you, when she checked, she had to put the needle or whatever she used in the opening to make sure that it didn't go all the way through until like the, the layers. Um, Cause if they had to, if it went through the layers, then I had to have a, a, a surgery. Um, but because it was just like mostly surface level, she put more strips on it and um, sealed it up to heal. But oh, her putting that needle in it, or whatever she used, I don't even know if it was a needle. It could have been like I don't know, like a pencil or something. Probably not a pencil. But it was something she used. Yeah, something she used to check, and that did not feel good at all. And it was the same opening at the hospital too. And I told them that. You know, hey, I feel like it's opening. Oh, it's just healing, it's fine. But they didn't do anything to like look at it or try to check and see if it was actually fine. They just said it was fine and just sent me on my way. So if you have that, just say, hey, can you double check? Do I need extra, you know, stitches right there, something to seal it to protect it a little bit better? Um, yeah, cause I didn't, I didn't do that. I just went home and like, oh, they're right, it's gonna heal. Cause you know, they're doctors and nurses. They supposed to tell you the truth. Um, at least to their knowledge, I guess, and I guess that's what they did. So, so I put Little Man down. I don't know where I left off, but my chip was full. I don't know where I left off, so I'll just start off with... I did have some swelling. Um, my hands swelled, my feet swelled. Uh, it started to swell after the surgery. One leg more than the other, as you guys saw in my video. Uh, and it continued to be that way for the month of June. So I was I swole, I swole for the month of June on my legs. I was having still abdominal pain and everything like that. I did small walks. I would walk to my mailbox and back. I would walk to the trash can and back just to try to get the exercise and those movements. But I still found that it's tight. Even to this day, when I go for a little walk, I feel like my uterus is getting tighter. <laughs> and it hurts and I can't walk for long and I'm still, I'm still recovering like two months for abdominal surgery to recover and then go back to work. That's crazy, so yeah. For my uh, C-section, I will add that they did one cut on the old C-section. They didn't do two cuts, so it was cut right over the pre the previous C-section. They, they said sometimes if you do a two cuts, like as in you have your old C-section and they do another one, then the healing process is faster because now you have new tissue that's healing, um, but instead, I didn't want two incision scars right there, so they just did it over the same one. And I had the same surgeon as I did with Amelia for this one, so she did the same procedures. Uh, I am doing the deep tissue massages to reduce the keloids. I had to get the okay from my doctor. She gave me the okay. My one month postpartum checkup, I've been diagnosed with postpartum depression as well. So I am seeing a counselor, I only had two sessions with her so far. The, the study says it's more likely if you had postpartum depression the first time that you will have it the second time. And I do have it again. Um, my therapist said it's not as severe or it's a mild case of postpartum depression, which is good. It's a good thing um, that it's a mild, you know, postpartum. I still find myself crying three times a week and that's probably why it's depression still. Um, so yeah just to add that in there so if you do need to get some assistance or some help that's you know go talk to somebody sometimes you can't talk to your family because they want to have you know woe is me when you're trying to tell them about something oh i'm sorry i wasn't there for you or i'm sorry i didn't do this the way you wanted to do it you know but you don't want to hear that because you you know i want to talk to somebody about how i'm feeling not that you don't matter but i'm trying to tell you something and you trying you make me feel worse you know so <laughs> It's good to have somebody outside of the family that you can talk to. So I have that. I see her once a week. I just started too. So I only had two sessions with her. The first was virtual. Um, so I only had, and the second one was in person. So I had two sessions. I'm a therapist getting therapy. That's okay too. You know, it's not no shame in trying to go get help and talking to someone 
Uh, you don't want to have postpartum psychosis, or that's the dangerous kind where you think your kids are turning into like you have psychosis, you're delusional, have uh, hallucinations, and think you're hearing things, and you don't want to go that route, you know. And even if you need, if you have postpartum depression and you need medication, that's okay too. Do what you need to do to take care of yourself, so that way you can take care of your baby, you know. Yeah, I've, I've started breastfeeding. I started. I started in the hospital, um, so I am breastfeeding. I am a breastfeeding mama. <laughs> Not to knock down anyone who, who can't or chose not to breastfeed because um, everyone has their own journey and everyone, I know some people who want to breastfeed and it's sad that they can't, um, but as long as your baby is getting fed, that's what's important moms. You know, you're feeding your baby, you're getting the nutrients that they, that they need. And some groups on Facebook you can find, if you want to give them that breast milk and you can't, they have Facebook donation groups that you can sign up for. I know in, um, California they have uh, a breast breast milk donation group and and you those mamas who oversupply or the baby's no longer taking the breast milk they donate that breast milk and they give it to a family or a child or parents who need it for their baby um, so that way they can have that benefits of it it may not be the same as if it's coming directly from mama to child because you know the the baby and mom child has that uh, mom makes what the baby needs so the other baby who's getting the donated milk they may get something extra and so that will be a benefit okay so the other baby who's getting donated milk may get extra boost from the other mom but not necessarily what's in his environment or circumstances from the mom that he that biological mom that or you know who's feeding him um, that because mom makes you know the stuff that the baby needs so they may get extra stuff from the other baby that, you know, that's not bad and just beneficial, um, but it may not be for the circumstances, but still beneficial, it's still healthy, it's still something that they need. So if you do get donated milk, if you're formula feeding, you know, all the glory as long as they, they are getting fed. Um, so I'm using a haka, as you guys saw. I'm using a haka on the side to catch the lead down, and then I'm using that to store my milk for when I go back to work. I'm supposed to go back to work on Friday, which does not make me happy. <laughs> the fact that I have to go back to work and leave my son. Having a job is good. I, I like having work and having income, but I don't like leaving my child to make income and to make work. Because <laughs> it's a, you know, bonding, right? And you want to be there for your, your kids and be there to raise them. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm still in the grieving process of my mom, so my counselor said, um, and my doctor said that, that you can confuse grief with postpartum, uh, or the grief can make postpartum worse, so <clears throat> that's where I'm at with that and just recovering. My Dutch brothers, <clears throat> my fiance taught me a trick. Get a small, whatever you're getting, and order it in a medium cup light ice and with the ice on the side and they give you a little bit more which is a delish so uh <clears throat> so my emotional state is is like that so it's like three times a week i cry or it's hard you know they don't people tell you it's hard you know they tell some people tell you it's not easy you know and all this stuff and it's true it's not uh, especially if you don't have Support. I have support that's going around, so that's good. It could be hard, like if you want more support, or if you want having, even if you have all the support in the world, you could still have postpartum depression and feel like you're not having the support. That's where it is emotionally. Uh, I've been better. <laughs> there are days that I'm, I think, oh man, I miss it when it's just me and Amelia. She's four now, you know, so I just miss that it was just me and her and have the routine that we had, even though it wasn't great because she went to bed at 11, 12. And, but now I'm getting less sleep, so I think that has to do with it. Little man don't sleep that, that much, and I don't have time to do my hair. This is the first time I have time to like actually sit down and do a video. I'm not even sure if he's awake or asleep, but he's in the same room as Chris, and if he wakes up and makes fuss, Chris can get him, but Chris is probably in a deep sleep. When I was in the hospital, uh, they, the something they don't tell you is that they push on your stomach. <laughs> to check if you are you have abdominal bleeding. So they press on you to make sure everything is going in its right place, and that hurts. They press on your uterus and they're pushing it down, and 
um, it does push out blood too because they're pushing on it and not not the business it was uncomfortable and it hurt um, they do want you to walk 12 hours afterwards after your c-section which is like crazy this time around I did it I walked uh, last c-section I did it um, with my daughter but yeah it's still hurting now um, hurts less but it still hurts uh, I found my hands I have like I want to say it's, I had it with Amelia too, postpartum arthritis. So when I wake up, my hands are so stiff, and I have to I can't pick them up right away. So I have Chris do it. So I have to massage my hands and stretch and pop things. <laughs> so that hurts. Um, I find myself needing a good uh, bra that's for uh, nursing, and the Modelo makes pretty good bras. So if you have, check it out because the other kind on Amazon that's crisscross. They make it's good, but they, when you try to nurse and you move it to the side a couple times, it stretches out, and then your nursing pad was all sideways and it's not even tight anymore, and it loses its elasticity, its stretch, <clears throat> and that's no bueno. So, so yeah, that's where I'm at postpartum. I can show you guys my stomach. <laughs> I'm in Amelia's room, so this is my postpartum belly. Sorry, my camera broke off. So here's my postpartum stomach. I have a like it goes like a shelf. You know, and then it sticks out right here. You can see it has like a little poochy pooch. <laughs> so this is the other side. It's still darker than the rest of my body, my stomach. Uh, it has like the line under here is very sensitive still. And here's my C-section scar. Um, they did it right over the other one. And so when they say deep tissue massages, I kind of take it and rub it, squeeze it, push it, squeeze 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 to help break down the collagen that's in here um so that way it's more malleable and softer so hopefully it won't form the keloid like it did last time but it is sensitive right in here and it hurts still right in here more so than the other side and so it hurts in here this is the same side that had the the leakage or the hole that she had to put it in um that was it's healed now but it's the same side that had the hole in it um, so that's my my stomach. I healed way way better uh, the first go around with Amelia. My stomach was more flatter, and I don't like this, y'all. I don't like it. I don't like the way my stomach hangs or how it looks like it's still pudgy and how it looks like you know like ugh. <laughs> that's what that's how I see. That's how I feel. Um, so it is recovering much slower. It could just because it's my second abdominal surgery, second pregnancy. Uh, that's why it looks like that. And so I want to probably try to work out. There's some things I saw on, on TikTok that how to help your abs go back together because it's probably like this. It's probably all separated and it's not healing right. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's me. Two months postpartum and trying to trying to make everything cohesive. Trying to relax. Uh, I didn't get to relax at all at all during my uh, two months. Uh, postpartum because it was so dirty in the house and I would just stress me out so I go back to work on Friday and I'm still stressed out stressed out that I have to go to work stressed out that the house is still dirty um, it's not as dirty as it was but it's still not not clean the way I want it to be and I still can't lift anything until I get the okay from my doctor um, that I can lift higher than 10 pounds or more than 10 pounds so yeah I have my doctor's appointment tomorrow uh, my postpartum checked up for two months and Liam has his shots um, so I'll come, I'll see you guys tomorrow when I get those all done. Uh, but yeah, this, this is a journey. I'm still adapting to two, two kids, not two under two, uh, two under five. Uh, that's better because Amelia helps a lot. But then she cries and I'm like, shh, be quiet. And she goes, ah, even more so. I'm like, girl, you being the ex, you being the most right now. But, um, yeah, so I'll make a video about how Amelia is transitioning to being a big sister and how um, she's handling it all as well. And maybe get some things from her and see what she says, you know, about being a big sister and how she likes it. So maybe I'll interview a toddler and her experience being a big sister. So with that, guys, if you like anything, or if you like anything, hope you like anything, hope you like something that I said. If you do, leave a comment down below with what it was that, you know, you can relate to or something like, hey, that's interesting. I never thought about that or, you know, anything like that. Even if that's about the Dutch Brothers and how you can get a, order a small, drink and put it in a medium cup will give you a little bit more brevet.
you know, a little more cream. Um, so with that, guys, I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys have a great, fantastic day. Stay blessed. Pray if you need to pray. Uh, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.